Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, welcome to the session. In this session, we will continue our discussion on the determination of fair fund rate and we have covered the discussion on deriving the demand curve for reserves and in this section, uh, we will focus on the supply of reserve in the fed fund market and as well as the determination of fed fund rate in the fed fund market. So, coming to the supply part, supply in the market for reserves, uh, you please recall uh, I have mentioned in the one of the previous session that means supply uh, in the market for reserve is coming directly from the federal reserve system. There are two components into it, one is non-borrowed reserve and the other one is borrowed reserves. And about the uh, non-borrowed reserve part uh, that is uh, coming through uh, open market operation that is through the purchase and sale of government securities by the federal reserve system from the banking system that is open market operation. And the second one is through the discount window uh, that using uh, discount rate, changes in discount rate, uh, the central bank uh, lend to the uh, member banks. So, that is called borrowed reserve. So, we have also said that actually the cost of borrowing from the Fed is the discount rate. So, we have made that there are two components, the total reserve that the central bank is injecting in the economy through the banking system can be classified into two types. Uh, one is non-borrowed reserve because this reserve is coming to the uh, member banks not by borrowing from the federal reserve system but by selling their uh, government securities, government, what are the government securities that they are holding, uh, they are selling some part of it to the federal resource system. So, in that way the reserve is, reserve is coming to the member banks and this reserve is called as uh, non-borrowed reserve. And second component is uh, borrowed reserve, this actually depends on, on the willingness of the member banks to borrow from the central bank. So, by making the change in the discount rate that the rate at which uh, central bank lend to the member banks uh, by making a change in the discount rate that is incentivizing them. For example, reducing the discount rate obviously you know that the cost of borrowing from the Fed declines and the member banks will be more incentivized to prompt and to uh, borrow from the central bank and utilize this fund for uh, lending and buying government securities. So, this part we are going to say that this is borrowed reserve. So, the, in this diagram, let us start with first how central bank is supplying reserve uh, in the Fed fund market. Then as a result, first draw the supply curve and then let us see what is going to happen when they are making further changes in open market operation. Then what is going to happen to the supply curve. And here we begin with the federal reserve system is engaging in open market operation and suppose they are doing uh, this is the open market operation that means they are injecting uh, for example here that uh, this much money this much uh, let us call for example uh, 100 uh, billion 100 uh, billion so this is uh, coming completely through the banking system by open market operation that means uh, the open market purchase by the central bank so as a result uh, when they are uh, buying 1 billion 100 billion of uh, um, government securities from the member banks, then you know that um, that much reserve is supplied into the market, into the banking system. Uh, then as a result, the reserve of entire banking system increases, the liquidity of uh, entire banking system increases as a result, right. So, in this case, uh, suppose that we are not talking about the uh, other window that is the borrowed reserve window. Uh, the discount array that we will uh, discuss immediately after completing this discussion. Uh, suppose here they 
in this discussion here the reserve coming to the uh, Fed fund market uh, in the banking system uh, is going to be 100 million and we are going to call it NBR that is through the open market purchase. What if they increase? Suppose uh, instead of open market operation they purchase some more government securities suppose they make into 150. So you can see that then the reserve uh, increases further right the reserve uh, that the NBR increases further this is become uh, NBR uh, let us call it NBR 2 this the first one NBR 1 NBR 1 then this will become NBR 2 uh, that means the as a result of open market operation uh, you can see that the reserve in the banking system increases. So, now uh, suppose they reduce, suppose they want to reduce the, uh, uh, suppose they reduce the open market operation, the purchase of government securities, then you know that uh, it will be declining to this much. For example, then you can say this is NBR uh, 3, NBR 3. So, that means open market, instead of open market purchase, if they do open market sale, then they will be reducing the reserve with the uh, banking system. So, in this case, let us see now how the rate of interest will be determined. Suppose the initial uh, open market operation they conducted and as a result assume that uh, they injected 100 billion dollar into the uh, banking system. So, you can see that the this is the demand curve, uh, demand curve you already derived, the supply curve is vertical supply curve is vertical uh, because uh, this is inelastic to uh, Fed fund rate, it, it does not change. Uh, the supply of uh, federal res the reserve in the Fed fund market is an arbitrary decision. Uh, it is taken by the uh, Federal Open Market Committee. Uh, they do not take into account the market Fed fund rate. Right. So, this is interest Fed fund rate uh, inelastic and this is a vertical line because this is an arbitrary decision uh, they do not take into the take the fed fund rate uh, as a, it is not response to responsive to uh, fed fund rate right it is a policy decision so from this uh, we are going to call that this curve as the supply curve this is a uh, supply of reserve uh, this one is um, demand for reserve and this curve is the supply curve. So, this is the suppose if you are doing only open market operation, if you are considering only open market operation, let us take some of some more time before introducing the other window, the discount window. Uh, then we can see that uh, suppose there is only open market operation, then the intersection, the supply curve intersect the demand curve at this point. So, at this point, you can see that. Uh, this is the intersection point and accordingly you can see that uh, this is the Fed fund rate determination. So, the Fed fund rate, the RS that the supply uh, curve of reserve, supply of reserve and the demand for reserve curve intersect at this point and this is going to be the uh, Fed fund rate. Uh, Fed fund rate, equilibrium Fed fund rate and this is the quantity supply that the this much is the RS and is equal to RD. So, given uh, this open market operation uh, then you can see that the Fed fund rate will be determined at this point. Now, what we can see that what if they increase the open market purchase that means uh, open market purchase by the federal reserve system and they inject uh, more money that more money more reserve into the banking system then this is going to be the new equilibrium point and the fed, fed fund rate uh, decreases uh, to this point this is going to be a new uh, fed fund rate right similarly what if instead of open market or purchase what if they do open market sale and take back the reserve from the banking system, then you can say that in this case, the Fed fund rate is going to increase, Fed fund rate is going to increase to uh, FFR2. Uh, this is all what we have discussed now, only the open market operation that is the bo non borrowed reserve component. And we have also seen that um, discussed in one of the session that uh, the federal reserve system has more control over the uh, open market operation that is the NBR uh, uh, than the borrowed reserve. Borrowed reserve we have seen that that depends on the banking systems uh, willingness to borrow.
let us now talk about the second tool that is the borrowed reserve uh, borrowed reserve that is through the discount window uh, the discount rate is the rate interest rate charged to commercial banks and other depository institutions on loans they receive from their regional federal reserve banks lending facility that is through the discount window right uh, the discount rate and the fed fund rates are both used by banks to maintain uh, reserve requirements so the difference is that banks use the discount rate when borrowing from the fed and the federal fund rate uh, when borrowing from other banks so this comes as a um, the tool uh, that means the um, uh, central bank is the lender of the last resort so whenever commercial banks need money uh, they can approach the central bank for their fund but what central bank can do the federal reserve system can do they can by changing the discount rate by increasing the discount rate for example they can discourage the borrowing for by the member banks and if they want to lend more through the uh, discount window they can reduce the uh, interest rate that the discount rate then uh, they will be they can they, they will be incentivized to borrow more so all discount window loans are fully secured with the collateral so the federal reserve banks offer three discount window program to the depository institutions uh, one is called primary credit second one secondary credit and seasonal credit with which each with its own interest rate for example coming to the primary credit rate it is the basic interest rate charge to most banks uh, is slightly higher than the fed fund rate and the current discount rate if you visit uh, federal reserve system website you can see that uh, that is going to be 2.5 percent rate so the discount rate that we are going to discuss in this session uh, is this primary credit rate uh, then there, there is secondary credit rate that is a higher rate that is charged to banks that don't meet requirements needed to achieve the primary rate uh, it is three percentage it's typically a half a point higher than the uh, primary credit rate in addition there is seasonal discount rate that is for small community banks uh, that need a temporary boost uh, in funds to meet local borrowing needs uh, that may include loans for borrowers uh, students uh, resorts and other seasonal activities now let us bring the supply of reserve through the uh, discount window that is through the borrowed reserve window let us uh, bring that one in our diagram so before that i am also showing this i have taken on this date uh, the current primary credit rate uh, the secondary credit rate seasonal rate and the fed fund target rate so importantly you can see one that means the fed fund target rate this one that the 2.5 the upper limit uh, you can see that the primary credit rate is equal to at this point you can see that this is going to be this is same that the discount rate and the upper limit of fed fund target rate is same that is 2.5 percentage uh, so that what we are going to do that uh, we are going to see how uh, the upper limit in the fed fund target rate uh, can be achieved by changing the uh, discount rate that is what we that that also we are going to discuss uh, actually we are going to discuss two points one the discount rate using the discount rate how they are able to uh, decide the upper range of the fed fund rate and similarly uh, about discussing the interest rate on reserve how they are able to define uh, the uh, lower limit of the fed fund rate this is the a supply curve when we are suppose the vertical part we said that this is the non borrowed uh, component that is the uh, supply of reserve uh, constituted mainly by uh, non borrowed reserve this much this much supply uh, is decided by uh, the nbr component of the reserve and after that suppose there is a demand for the quantity supply then the after that uh, what are they do the, through the discount window uh, by determining the discount rate uh, suppose they determine the discount rate for example here uh, let us call it uh, id uh, for example let us make it for example 2.5 percentage uh, this component uh, if there is demand suppose uh, right now the demand curve the equilibrium is already achieved at this point this is the supply curve's vertical component is uh, intersecting at this point then what we can do that we are going to gradually shift uh, 
uh, the demand curve uh, right words then to see how discount rate is going to play a role but at this work here we can see that uh, this is the supply curves vertical part uh, that the uh, uh, supply of reserve so that means th this much part we are going to say this quantity that means uh, suppose we say that this one is 100 billion so this much is uh, nbr component of the supply of reserve and this part uh, is going to be the borrowed uh, reserve borrowed reserve component so when we talk about the supply combo the quantity uh, this much part is the nbr component and uh, this part is going to be the uh, borrowed reserve borrowed reserve component but when the suppose to, to the open market purchase suppose the curve is shifting rightwards that means the borrowed non borrowed reserve curve the nbr uh, component of the uh, supply of reserve shifting rightwards then obviously you know that uh, the nbr component is increasing like that and the borrowed reserves component will be declining so what is special with this id so in the previous session we have seen that um, the um, federal fund rate will never go uh, below the uh, interest rate on reserve that we have seen uh, 2.25 percentage it will never go the actual fed fund rate uh, will never go uh, below 2.25 percentage uh, 2.25 percentage uh, because uh, we discussed that we found there that um, it is better for the banks to deposit their money to deposit uh, in the federal fund uh, federal resource system and earn interest instead of uh, lending to the uh, fed fund market at a rate uh, lower than less than the ir and another thing we are going to see that uh, the fed fund rate is never going to be above uh, the interest rate on discount rate the interest rate on federal resource systems loan so the fed fund rate uh, is never going to be above uh, the discount rate why the reason uh, reason here is that suppose the ffr suppose the ffr is due to some reason let us see that ffr is going to be for example 2.6 percentage uh, and anyway the central bank is going to give loan uh, at 2 point that the id is um, 2.5 percentage and i am going to say that uh, ffr is never going to be above uh, the interest rate on disc the discount rate because what if um, it is going to be 2.6 percentage uh, if the federal fund rate due to some reason if the markets for fed fund rate the discount rate the fed fund rate is going to be 2.6 percentage then it is better for all the member banks to borrow from the federal resource system and lend in the uh, fed fund market that means they can borrow from the federal resource system at a rate of 2.5 and they can lend in the uh, fed fund market at a 2.6 percentage then the the difference that this um, the difference here is that 0.1 percentage that is going to be their profit but you know that in that way they, they can lend but there is no one is going to uh, borrow at a 2.6 percentage because anyway the fed for they can borrow at a 2.5 percentage from the uh, federal resource system so because of this intuition this reason uh, we can confidently say that um, uh, federal uh, federal fund rate is never going to be above the discount rate so that means the upper rate um, of uh, fed fund rate is going to be the discount rate so two things we inferred here the lower limit of uh, fed fund rate is um, it can go ma uh, minimum this much only that is 2.25 percentage it will never go uh, never become 2.24 or 2.22 like that uh, that is the lower limit and upper limit it is it can become maximum equal to the interest that the discount rate uh, it will never go above it will never go above 2.5 percentage accordingly uh, this is the reason so uh, when the fed announced the lower limit and upper limit actually they are also changing the reserve the interest rate on reserve this they are determining deciding this also they are deciding then only they can attain that means uh, they can make the member banks to fall in the boundary that the lower limit and upper limit and the effective fed fund rate will be somewhere between the lower limit and the upper limit so in this example 
this is going to be the Fed fund rate. Suppose let us see that this is for example 2.4 percentage. Now let us see what if Federal Reserve System is going to reduce the interest rate. So here the ID one is this one. Uh, suppose they are going to uh, reduce the discount rate to uh, 2.45 percentage. So that means then the upper limit is going to be maximum uh, 2.45 percentage. Uh, it will never go. The Fed fund rate will never go above. Uh, 2.45 percentage the reason that we discussed just now that means uh, the Fed actual Fed fund rate is above 2.5 percentage uh, it is uh, profitable for all banks to borrow from uh, federal resource system and lend in the uh, Fed, Fed fund market but you know that uh, no one will be borrowing there uh, because why should they borrow it um, above for 2.45 percentage from the Fed fund market since they can easily get fund at a 2.45 percent that is the discount rate from the uh, central bank from the fed resource system so what we can see that by reducing the discount rate uh, they can actually limit uh, also reduce the upper bound of the uh, fed fund rate so when they reduce the rate of interest is going to the curve supply curve is going to uh, shift like that so this is rs1 uh, this is then rs this is going to be like this. Uh, so, what the simple explanation I have given here borrowing from the Fed is a substitute for borrowing from other banks. Uh, if uh, interest rate on Fed, Fed fund rate is uh, less than the uh, discount rate, then banks will not borrow from the Fed. Uh, banks will not borrow from the Fed, and the borrowed reserve are going to be zero. So you can see that uh, in this case the determined uh, federal rate of inter interest is 2.4 and when uh, Fed fund rate is uh, 2.5 that the discount rate is 2.5 you can see that uh, the supply curve the demand curve intersect at this point they are the member banks uh, are not go going to borrow from the Fed they, they are not going to go borrow from uh, the central bank or the federal resource system so then the BR is going to be 0 because here the in this uh, discussion we can say that the demand the demand and supply is going to be um, R, RD is equal to 100 here that we can see here this much only will be demanded and then accordingly RS is also going to be uh, 100 so that means RS, R, RD is equal to RS uh, at this point here right. So at this uh, equilibrium point you can say that uh, this is the uh, demand and supply of reserve. So in this case you can say that the BR though supply curve is there but actually the BR is 0 here. So in this case what we can see that uh, the supply curve the actual supply curve what we are using is only vertical. So the horizontal part is uh, not taking place here because the discount rate is the Fed fund rate is actual Fed fund rate is uh, lower than the uh, discount rate here. So at IF suppose the Fed fund rate rises above uh, the discount uh, discount rate then we discussed this one already banks will borrow more and more at ID and relent at a uh, the Fed fund rate, uh, Fed fund rate. Then at that time, uh, we can see that uh, suppose this curve uh, shifting rightwards. Maybe we can do that. This curve is shifting rightwards. For example, like this. Uh, then you can say that the equilibrium is going to happen here. Um, if this is the initial uh, BR curve, uh, then if they reduce it further, then they will be demanding here that this is the other equilibrium point. So here we can say that at this point, um, uh, when the IF that the uh, Fed fund rate keep on increasing rises above the discount rate for example this is the discount rate and uh, IFF um, increases then you can see that um, th they can borrow the member banks can borrow from the uh, federal resource system and lend in the Fed fund market. So here uh, you can see that the supply curve is uh, horizontal that is at this point right that is. Uh, our infinite increase uh, in the supply and demand for um, reserve from the uh, federal reserve system. So this is the uh, diagram that we can use for the to discuss the equilibrium in the market for reserve. So 
already we is clear to you this is the downward sloping demand curve but uh, uh, at this point uh, that the interest rate on reserve from this point onwards the demand curve will become uh, perfectly elastic uh, and we already draw already the for the vertical um, NBR reserve curve uh, the reserve constituted from NBR this is a non responsive inelastic to uh, interest rate uh, then this is the uh, elastic part that means uh, determined by the discount rate and the supply curve given this one the uh, position uh, position of the uh, demand curve we can see that the interest rate uh, the equilibrium point is uh, at this point this is the uh, equilibrium point that means this is the equilibrium uh, fed fund rate in the market so here uh, you can see that uh, it is the lower limit is the interest rate on uh, interest rate on reserve uh, interest rate on reserve um, uh, and the upper limit is um, uh, interest rate on discount that is uh, this one and it is actually from this discussion uh, based on how much uh, open market operation they are doing uh, and what is the uh, position of the uh, demand curve accordingly we can say given this position this is going to be the uh, new equilibrium point. So, let us look at uh, what if we are going to say that uh, this is never going to be the equilibrium point the IF of 1 is never going to be the equilibrium point because when the given this uh, position of demand curve and position of the supply curve uh, this is never going to be the fed fund rate uh, because you can see that there is excess demand for reserve at uh, this position there is excess demand right excess demand because the opportunity cost of holding um, opportunity cost of holding excess reserve decreases for many large banks many banks so they demand more reserve uh, from the uh, banks instead of then they will be lending their money uh, what are the large banks they prefer to lend their money uh, for their you know, loans and buying government securities and instead it to meet the uh, recurred reserve and excess reserve uh, they will be preferring to uh, borrow from the market. So, there will be excess demand. So, as a result because of the excess demand uh, you know that when the demand increases the rate of interest also increases here. So, as a result there is an upward pressure more and more banks uh, will prefer to borrow from the Fed fund market and as a result uh, the Fed fund rate is going to increase. What if uh, we are also going to say that this is not going to be the uh, equilibrium rate of interest that the IF of 2 because you can see that here uh, there is excess supply is there. Uh, there is excess supply of uh, reserve in the market. The demand is only this much at this rate but supply is this much. So, because of the excess supply uh, there will be pressure. Uh, there, there will be pressure to reduce the rate of interest in the market. So, as a result the rate of interest will decline to this point. So, initially it will increase uh, when VFF uh, Fed fund rate is this one then there will be upward pressure uh, because of excess demand when the Fed fund rate is this one I uh, F of 2 then there is a downward pressure on uh, interest rate and finally the equilibrium rate of interest will be uh, attained at I F of uh, so, in this session uh, we have completed the discussion on how Fed fund rate uh, are being determined using demand and supply curve and there we also use um, the two policy tools by Federal Reserve System. One is uh, interest rate on reserves that is uh, IER and the other one is uh, the discount rate that is through the BR, the discount window uh, through the borrowed reserve window. And in the next session, uh, let us discuss uh, what if by using all the three policy tools that the reserve and excess the reserve requirement, uh, changing the reserve requirement and changing the uh, borrow in the disc that a discount rate and also doing open market operation that the increase purchase or sale and as a result what is going to happen to the uh, Fed fund rate. Thank you and see you in the next session.